Given f of x equals 1 over x and g of x equals x minus 3, we need to find the following. So a through e. Okay, so I'm going to put a over here. So the first thing that they want is they want us to find f composed with g at x. Now this notation is a composite function. There are two notations for composite functions. You should know both of them and pick your preference as to which one you want to use. Me personally, I do not like this notation. I like the other composite function notation and I write it down here. This is f composed with g at x, which is equivalent to, it's the same thing as this notation. The first one that they say is the outer function. The second one that they say is the inner function, and you can kind of see it here. This is the outer function, and then g is inside the parentheses. So I'm just going to switch that up right here. This is the same thing as saying f of g of x. Okay, now composite functions are just fancy way of saying we're taking two functions, in this case the f function and the g function, and we're basically meshing them together to create one single output or one single answer. Now, with composite functions, always work from the inner function to the outer function. The inner function meaning the one that's more into the parentheses. So in this case, we have a g of x function that's inside the parentheses, and then the f function on the outside. So this g function is the inner one. This f function is the outer one. So we're going to be working from inner to outer. Now, composite functions might look scary, but they're not. All we got to do is this two-step process down here in the tips and tricks. It says plug in the input, it's usually a number, for the inner function and solve. So for this one, and I'll keep with the number system, we'll say a, or 1, the inner function was g of x. Now, they're just telling me to plug in x here. And they already told me what g of x equals. It equals x minus 3. So I'm going to say that this equals x minus 3. OK, well, I can't simplify this, so I'm going to hold this. And now I move to the second part. Now on the second part, in tips and tricks for composite functions, you take that new input, was the output for what you solved for, whatever you solved for, and you plug it into the outer function. And the outer function in this case was the f function. So I'm going to say for number two, f of plug this whole thing in. So instead of x, I'm going to now plug in x minus 3. So anytime that you see an x in your f of x function, and there's only one at the bottom here, you're going to plug in this instead. Okay, so it's going to be 1 over, and then plug in what you have, x minus 3. And that is your new composite function. So you could say this, you could say f composed uh, with g at x, or you could say that this equals, you know, f of g of x. Oop, two parentheses. They all mean the same thing. I can't simplify this, so that is the answer for the first part. So I'm going to just box this off. There you go. Okay, so A is done. So your new composite function when you mesh together your f and g function is just 1 over x minus 3. So A is done. B, now they want the domain of this composite function in interval notation. Okay, well, I'm just going to take it from the notation that I like. If f of g of x is 1 over x minus 3 with domains, and by the way, guys, if you are having trouble with domain, have no fear because we have a whole playlist just for domain and range uh, questions. So I'm going to kind of go at a faster pace because we have that playlist for you guys already. But all you have to know for this one is just look at the denominator. Remember, for a domain, you have to think of exclusions, meaning what values do not work or will not give a real number. And for denominators, remember, the denominator cannot be equal to zero. 
Anything divided by zero is always undefined. So what number here will get me to being making this whole thing equal to zero? Well, let's see. X minus three equals zero. If we solve for X, right, we pull over the three onto the side, we get X being a positive three. So I know that X cannot equal, or in this case, I'll put a slash through it. X cannot equal three because three minus three is zero. So I know that X cannot equal three. Can it be less than three? Yeah. Denominators, you can have a negative value. Can it be more than three? Yeah. Because for denominators, you can have positive values. The only exclusion is this number. So interval notation. I could start all the way from negative infinity. And remember, I'm using a parenthesis here because parenthesis means excluding. Infinity is just a theoretical concept, but it's not an actual numerical value. So I can go from negative infinity all the way up until three. And I have to exclude this because if I include it, it would not work. So I have to put a parenthesis. And then for interval notation, if you want to continue on with your break, you put a U here. And then I will start at three. I cannot include it, so I have to exclude it. That's another parenthesis. But I can go all the way to infinity. Parenthesis, because infinity is just theory. It's not an actual number. And that is your domain in interval notation. So B is done. Okay, moving on to C. I'll put C over here. C is G composed of F, a G composed with F of X. I personally don't like this notation, so I'm going to say it in the other notation. Now remember, this is the outer function, and this is the inner function. So g composed of f, or actually I'll say g of f of x. And now you can clearly see this is the inner function, and this, the g function, is the outer function. So let's go. One, remember, work from inners to outers. So the inner one was just f of x. Okay, well, f of x was just 1 over x. So I'm going to put that there. I can't simplify that. So this will be my new input for the second part. I'm plugging in for this for the g function. So I'm going to say g now of this whole guy equals, well, for every x value in the g function, now I'm just going to plug in 1 over x. So this would be 1 over x, and then finish out the g function, minus 3. Okay. Can I simplify that? Not really. So I'm just going to leave it like that. This is the same thing as saying g of 1 over x, but it's also g of f of x. Or you could even say g composed with f at x, they all mean the same thing. Okay, now we are ready to do part D. Part C is done, we just gotta find the domain. So I'm gonna put D here. Okay, well if we have, I'm just gonna use the notation that I like, and it's G of F of X. If this is one over X minus three, remember for domains, we have to think of exclusion values. Here we go again where we have a x value in the denominator. And remember, the denominator cannot equal 0. Well, this one's easy, right? It's literally just x. So what value can I not have here? x cannot be equal to 0. Okay. Is there any other exclusions? No. Denominators could be negative. So I can go all the way to negative infinity. Denominators can be positive, so I can go all the way to positive infinity. I just can't go to zero. So, bracket, uh, parentheses, because I need to exclude negative infinity. It's just a theoretical value. And I go all the way to zero now, because that's my exclusion number. I have to exclude it, so parentheses. Moving to the next part, I'm picking it up from zero again, parentheses, because we have to exclude zero. And then positive infinity. 
And that's it. So this is your domain for uh, g of f of x. Now notice two things. Even though we did composite functions with the same two functions, we just swapped the order, right? One was f of g of x, the other one was g of f of x. The function is completely different, the composite function, and the domain is completely different. So composite functions are very, very, very specific with their ordering. You cannot just swap the functions and think that it's going to be the same, because it's not. Okay, last but not least, we're just doing e. I'll put e on the top here. And in this case, we're now just doing division. Now we're just, we're not making a composite function. We're just dividing two functions. That's this notation. And I have the notation down here. Dividing functions, f divided by g of x, is the same thing as f of x divided by g of x. So I'm going to say f divided by g x is the same thing as f of x divided by g of x. And now you can clearly see what's on the top and what's on the bottom. The f of x function is on the top. So f of x was 1 over x. So I'm going to say 1 over x divided by, divided by, and now I just got to put the g function. The g function was x minus 3. x minus 3. Um, so now what you can do, especially because we don't really like to be dividing with fractions. Remember, with fractions, it's keep, change, change. We just multiply by the reciprocal. And this is technically over 1, right? So I'm just going to say f of x over g of x equals 1 over x, that was the f function, times 1 over x minus 3. Do you see how I just inversed this from this? That's all you do. And now we just have to simplify. So 1 times 1 is just 1. So 1 on the top. And then if you want to combine these, it would just be x times x minus 3. If you wanted to distribute that, that's fine as well. Then you would get 2x minus 3x. Uh, sorry, not 2x. You would get x squared x squared minus 3x, but it's the same thing. I'm just going to keep this part, all right? And that would be your new function when you divide your f function divided by your g function. So there you go. Okay, let me just check this off because I'd like to see everything checked. A through E is done. Hopefully this helped, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought. Um, like this video if it was good for you, and if you want to help the channel out and help us out, you can click that subscribe button. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have an amazing day, and I will see you all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.